Hi, back to Ungifted. And uh, I feel bad for the robot. So we've had a, um, a dance that went very wrong. The Daniels came and snuck and grabbed Tim and basically started trashing him in the center of the dance. And Donovan had to make a choice. Dr. Schultz was at the dance. He went back and tried to save Tin Man anyway, even though it could have gotten caught. We start with chapter 14 on page 148. It's called Unsorry, and it's from the perspective of Noah Euclidus, IQ 206. For all the 800 million views on YouTube, you had to figure there were at least another 800 million that never got filmed. YouTube had its conundrums too. A, the best stuff comes when somebody does something awesome. B, awesomeness is unpredictable, so it isn't practical to have a camera in hand at all times to capture it. Me, being the hero of the Valentine dance, for instance, one day it might be possible to hardwire a person's optic nerve to a tiny memory chip and plant it in the base of, your, of the skull. You just need a simple internet connection to upload images to YouTube. With our best minds focused on curing diseases and stuff like that, I wasn't holding my breath. Speaking of the dance, Friday night had not been kind to Tin Man. Oh, the scratches could be buffed out, the dents repaired, and the broken forklift arm retached again, but the motor that ran the lift mechanism had suffered permanent damage. And Oz said our budget for new materials was exhausted. Abigail was distraught, but if we don't have a lift mechanism, we'll have to withdraw from the competition. The prospect had JC so stressed out that she started talking about South American butterfly migrations. If anyone knew more random facts than me, it was JC. But today it was getting on my nerves. My blunt trauma anterior epistasis is better, thank you very much. Who cares about your dumb bloody nose, Abigail snapped. I care, I shot back. It really hurt. I didn't see any of you guys single-handedly rescuing Tin Man in the riot. For some reason, I was getting no credit at all for sacrificing my body. If it isn't on YouTube, it might as well have never happened. More like you caused the riot, put in Latrell sourly, when you jumped on everyone from the top of the DJ booth. It wasn't a jump, I explained through clenched teeth. It was a takedown. It was a textbook wrestling move. Chloe turned to Donovan. Your two friends named Daniel? Why did they do that? Why would they want to mess with our robot? Donovan shrugged. A lot of kids have an attitude about the gifted program, and those guys definitely have an attitude now that I'm in it. Look at this place. Hardcastle's an ancient ruin compared to here. They've got about a sixteenth of the stuff we do. They may call us nerds, but it's pretty cool having your own robot. I didn't agree. A robot wasn't cool. It was just complicated. Like the Lego Star Wars Imperial Snowwalker, Consumer Reports said that not even a genius could put one together. They were wrong. I'd already assembled six. In my opinion, having a robot was a lot less interesting than having a riot. Riots were unforeseeable and chaotic, very YouTube-like. Oz tried everything to get money for a new motor. He requested funds from the athletic budget, but he couldn't convince them that Tin Man was more important than badminton. He even took apart his own lawnmower in the hopes that the engine would be the right size. It wasn't, and now the lawnmower wouldn't go back together. Latrell had to go to his house to fix it. Couldn't we raise the money, Chloe pleaded, sell candy bars or something? We can't drop out. Oz shrugged unhappily. There's simply not enough time to set something up like that. The robotics meet is in three weeks. Donovan was even quieter than usual during the entire class. Tin Man's outer shell was completely covered with graphics by now, so there was nothing for him to do but drive, and with the lift system inoperable, there was no sense driving the robot anywhere. Finally, when the period was over, he gathered us in the hall. I think I found us a spare motor. Abigail began jumping up and down. What? What? Where? In the custodial office, he explained. It runs one of the floor polishers. You'd know better than me, but I'm pretty sure it'll fit Tin Man. How did you reach that conclusion, I inquired. Did you measure the unit itself, or are you thinking about the size and location of the key components and connections? I guessed, he admitted a little sheepishly. We stared at him in amazement. After all, we were the ones who had created Tin Man, not Donovan. It had taken design, programming, electronics, hydraulics, pneumatics, and physical or mechanical engineering. No guessing. Donovan explained, there are two ways it can go. It can either fix it, it can either fit or not fit. A probability analysis, I mused. He shrugged. I can't say for sure it'll work, but I guarantee that if we don't at least try, the bucket of bolts will have no lift motor. What if we got to lose? Chloe had a practical question, and the custodians are letting us have it? They're always so crabby. Donovan grinned. They're really great guys. 
He insisted that we had to pick up the engine immediately, even before going to the cafeteria to eat. We'd all learned to trust Donovan for one reason or another, so we went along with it. But when we arrived at the custodial office, it was deserted. Where is everybody? I asked. At lunch, Donovan replied. But where's the motor? Abigail persisted. It's in the floor polisher, Donovan exclaimed, producing a screwdriver. Where else? It was all beginning to make sense. The custodians weren't giving us anything. We were taking. Abigail was furious. We can't steal their motor. It's not their motor, Donovan lectured. It's the school's motor and also the school's robot. I'd seen things like this on YouTube, but never could I have imagined being part of it in real life. It took Luttrell several tense minutes to dismantle the polisher and remove the engine. Put the cover back on, Donovan instructed. We don't want them to see it's missing. Abigail was practically hysterical. Don't you think they're going to notice when they try to polish the floor? I was the lookout. It was my job to give the code word if I saw one of the custodians coming. Pythagoras, I hissed. Donovan yanked the screwdriver out of Latrell's hand and tossed it out of view while kicking the floor polisher under a workbench. In the same motion, he herded everybody into the supply closet, jammed in after them, and slammed the door. I'd never seen anybody move so fast. It's okay, I called. It was just I was just testing. Donovan came out of the closet and fixed me with twin lasers. Do that again, and they'll be watching your funeral on YouTube. I admire Donovan, but he scared me sometimes. Sinking back into the robotics lab with our prize was the most exciting experience I could remember, even better than my big takedown at the dance. I knew a lot about the effects of adrenaline on the human body, but that was different than actually feeling my heart pounding against my ribcage. Fear mixed with exhilaration, plus the notion that at any second we could get caught. It was almost as if I really hadn't been alive until Donovan showed up at the academy. Oz was ecstatic. Where did you guys get this? It didn't bother him at all that nobody answered. The polisher's motor was a little bit larger than the broken one. We'll have to reconfigure it to run on battery power, Oz advised, and the extra weight might slow us down a little. But we'll have a lot more juice, Donovan put in. We don't need more juice, Abigail pointed out. The task is to pick up inflatable rings that weigh practically nothing. Oz had a different opinion. We had a real problem, and we found a way to solve it. That's what the robotics program is all about. The next day, the floor looked a little dull and neglected, but Tin Man was back online. The rumor started with Kevin Amari, who dropped the bomb in the cafeteria. I overheard Oz telling Mr. Del Rio that they're going to retest Donovan for the Academy. Chloe choked on a celery stalk. What? Why? You're kidding, right? Abigail said flatly. It's obvious to everyone he isn't gifted. They gave him a few weeks to prove himself, and he didn't. He proved himself a million different ways, Chloe argued. Because he stole a motor, she retorted. Maybe, I said defiantly. If you give the robotics team a motor, we can do anything with it. But if you asked us to get a motor, we'd all be dead in the water. And what about human growth and development, Chloe demanded? It doesn't matter, Abigail insisted. They can't just keep letting him out, letting him flunk. Well, they do it with me, I muttered. I'd love to be retested. I'd show them the true meaning of flunk. Abigail stared me down. Come on. You can't seriously be saying you don't see any difference between Donovan's situation and your personal weirdness. Your IQ is higher than his by at least a whole person. We need him, I insisted. He's more important than any of us. Please, one of us couldn't learn to work a controller or download stupid pictures to put on him? We could do it, I gritted, but we'd do it wrong. It was impossible to explain what I meant. Donovan was a human version of YouTube. Click on him and he, you might get Einstein eating a banana or heisting a motor or robot driver or human growth and development credit. It was like rolling a die with an infinite number of options. Chloe looked thoughtful. Maybe he'll pass the retest. There was an awkward silence when that idea went down like a lead balloon. He's working really hard, she argued. You know, for him. Exactly, Abigail was triumphant. His grades are awful. He might be trying, but what does that mean? Is this the best he can do? You don't have to look so happy about it, I told her. What about a science project, Latrell suggested? He's burning the midnight oil on that. Right, Abigail agreed sarcastically, googling dog facts and taking pictures of his family pet. Kevin had a suggestion. We could ask Oz to delay the test, at least until after the human growth and development, and by then the robotics meet would be done too. Chloe was annoyed, a little selfish, don't you think? Besides, Latrell told him, big-time colleges, bench superstars who are household names because their grade point averages drop below 2-0. He's toast. We're toast, groaned Kevin. If we go to the meet without Donovan, Cold Spring Harbor is going to run all over us. Again. Not necessarily, Abigail said defiantly. Even she didn't sound convinced. J.C. seemed to be bursting with something to say, but when we turned to her, she just mumbled nothing. I was just thinking about those subatomic particles that travel faster than light. I guess it doesn't help Donovan to know 
Einstein was probably wrong. He could study, Chloe suggested, and when snorts of letter, laughter greeted this, he said we could help him study. Or, I put in thoughtfully, one of us could take the test for him to make sure he passes. Oh, right, said Kevin, like no one's going to notice it's the wrong person. The test is on a computer, remember? All we'd have to do is gain remote control of his mouse and change just enough of his answers to put him over the top. Abigail was horrified. That's cheating. Do you know how much trouble you could get in for that? I was intrigued. How much? In my case, they'd probably just take the opportunity to give me extra credit. The whole system's rigged against me. If you get caught doing something like that, Abigail warned, her voice rising, it would go on your permanent record. You'd never get into Stanford or MIT with a black mark like that. Really? I asked. Abigail rolled her eyes. For you, they just had 20 grand to your scholarship. Chloe shook her head sadly. I feel bad for Donovan. He's a really good person. I got mad at him at the dance, but now I know he was only trying to protect me. I wish we could help him, you know, legally. I realized something about Donovan then. We were two sides of the same coin. He was st struggling to stay in the gifted program, and I was struggling to get out. And we'll stop there.